Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of setting up your camera for video filming. It's a guide for complete beginners, so I will try to explain in the most simple way. And if you already know about a certain point, feel free to jump to the next section. Today we're going to focus on video settings. So make sure you are at the video mode instead of photo or SNQ mode. Before we do anything that is really related to filming, let's fix the problem that lots of people are concerned about, overheating. Some people encounter this problem while setting up the camera, even before they start to film. So to prevent overheating, let's go to menu, see this suitcase at the bottom, this is the setup icon. Now go all the way down to number 9, power setting option. Choose auto power off temperature. It is standard by default, but let's change it to high so that it will last longer before it overheats and shut down automatically. Now back to the main page. You can see main 1 and main 2. The most important settings are at main one page. We're going to set the file format first. You have several options to choose from. They look quite intimidating, but simply speaking, the two options at the bottom, SI4K and SIHD, are going to give you the best quality, but they take up way too much space. So I normally won't use them. And the first one, XAVCHS, will give you great quality, smaller file size, but it is a newer format, so it might be difficult to edit if you are using an old computer. XAVCS 4K and XAVCS HD are like the trade off between the file size and quality, and it is easy to edit. So, if you have a powerful computer, choose the first one. If you have an older computer, choose the second one. Between 4K and HD, I don't see any reason to shoot in HD if you have the 4K option. Back to the one next to it, record setting. You have 10 bit and 8 bit to choose from. 10 bit means you will have more smooth transition of color so that you won't see the annoying color bending. This is the most obvious if you are doing heavy color grading or in low light situations. So make sure you always choose 10 bit. Next, let's talk about some of the basic settings you will need to adjust before you start filming. First, adjust your frame rate. The difference between 24 and 60 FPS is that 60 fps will give you 2.5 times slower motion so if you want to show the detail of fast moving objects slowing the footage down can give you a very special visual impact but you will have to adjust the playback during editing there is absolutely no difference when you look at it from the camera if you want a more cinematic look follow the 180 degree rule this is the standard in the film industry. So basically, you double the shutter speed number to the frame rate, or at least use the closest number. For example, when I set 24 frames per second, my shutter speed should be 1 over 48. But we don't have that option, so I will set the shutter speed to 1 over 50. And when I use 60 frames per second, my shutter speed should be 1 over 120, but again, we don't have that option, so I will choose 1 over 125. This way, you can get natural motion blur, and therefore more cinematic. Another important setting is picture profile. You have lots of numbers to choose from. Which picture profile number doesn't matter much as long as you choose the correct gamma and color mode. Now if you want to maximize the ability out of this powerful camera, S-Log3 is the best choice. 
we will set the gamma to as log 3, color mode as gamma 3 cine. Detail, I will set it to minus 7. As log 3 is a camera color profile that allows you to capture a wider range of colors and brightness levels in your footage. It means that you can record more details in both bright and dark areas of your video. So for example, if you are filming a scene with bright sunlight and deep shadow, S-Log3 will allow you to capture the details in both areas. This gives you more flexibility in post-production. However, because S-Log3 is a flat color profile, the footage may look washed out when viewed directly out of the camera. So you will need to color grade your footage in post-production to bring out the colors and contrast. But here is a tip. Go to menu. Just below the picture profile, you can see assist. Turn it on. And on the right hand side, choose as log 3 to rec 709. This way you can preview your approximate final look on the camera. When shooting in s 3, you have two base ISOs at 640 and 12800. This means that the footage will look the cleanest at these two numbers. So my suggestion is if you are one or two numbers below 12800, you should just go up to 12800 and bring down the exposure by using a larger F number or use an ND filter because ISO 12800 will look much cleaner than ISO 8000. Another very popular picture profile is Ascinitone. If you are taking videos in a very well lit environment and you want to use the footage straight out of the camera, I would suggest using Ascinitone and color mode also set to Ascinitone. The primary advantage of Ascinitone is that it produces a unique cinematic look with warm skin tones. Another advantage of Ascinitone is that it is easy to use and you can save time in post-production. Since it is a pre-built color profile, it does not require extensive color grading or correction, which can save time and effort in editing process. The two base ISO numbers of Ascinitone are 100 and 2000, so make sure you stick to these two numbers if possible. For now, we have already walked through the most important settings. So let me show you my customized FN settings, and I will also show you how to change it to your own preference. When you press the FN button, you will see some of the most frequently used functions. So better make sure they are really useful to you, otherwise it will be a waste. Let's go through them one by one. We have already covered picture profile. So next, audio level. I will set it to 20. And I think this is not something that we will need to change constantly. So I will replace it with a more frequently used function. Let's go to menu. Tap on the suitcase icon again. Number three, operation customize. FN menu settings. At the top, you have your photography setting, but we will only be looking at a video setting at the bottom today. So like I said, we will replace the audio level with frame rate. Now you already know how to change the function menu, so I will just show you my customized function menu to you. Next is the steady shot. Dynamic active steady shot is very useful for movement especially when you are walking. But um, I will leave it to standard for now because in most cases, standard is enough and you will have a wider view. The next item originally was the recognition target, which allows you to choose what kind of subject you are trying to focus. But I think it is redundant because you can already adjust it on the monitor. So I changed it to greed, which can help your composition. 
autofocus continuous and manual focus. I will leave it as AFC for now, but even for a camera with amazing autofocus, there are times when you need manual focus. For a manual focus tip, feel free to check out my tutorial on that topic. The next item was originally soft skin effect, but I think this effect looks so fake, so I changed it to picking. This can help you see clearly which area you're focusing on. White balance, we will leave it there as auto. In most cases, auto works fine, but when it doesn't work, you can also change it according to the weather or the lighting of the environment. For the next item, we will change it to zebra display. So basically when something is overexposed, you will see the zebra lines on the monitor. It won't be recorded in the final video. It is just a display to warn you that it is overexposed. Framing stabilizer helps keeping the subject at a fixed area. You can choose center so the subject will always stay at the center or you can appoint an area for it. I will turn it off for now. Touch function in shooting. If you are shooting something that doesn't move, touch focus is fine. But when you are checking a moving object, you can choose checking. Focus area. I think wide works in most situations. Focus mode, I usually use manual, especially in low light. But if the lighting is good, other modes works fine too. Now we're going to walk through the menu. I won't cover all of them. I will just talk about the features that I use more often. Image quality, we have already covered file format and movie setting. Let's look at S and Q settings. Here you can see record frame rate and SNQ frame rate. So every time you change the numbers, at the bottom there is an explanation telling you how it works. Whether it is a slow motion or quick motion video, the difference between shooting in SNQ and in normal video mode is that you can see the SNQ result on camera immediately without editing. Apart from SNQ, you also have time lapse. This works very similar to quick motion in the SNQ. But with time lapse, you can set longer intervals. So it really depends on what you're going to shoot. At the bottom, lens compensation. Just turn everything to auto so that when you use a compatible lens, it will do the correction automatically. Format is where you format your SD card. Remember to format it on your camera instead of formatting on your computer. Number three, file. Here you can set how your files are going to be named. Go to file name format. I will choose title plus date. And back to title name setting, I will set it to ZVE1. Number five, shutter silent. You can decide whether you want to turn on silent mode or not. Number nine, zoom. You can choose optical zoom, clear image zoom, and digital zoom. Digital zoom is absolutely not recommended because the quality isn't very good, but clear image zoom is fine. Once you choose it, you can turn your prime lens into a zoom lens, or you can extend the zoom range of your zoom lens. So just by pushing or pulling the rocker at the front, you can zoom in or zoom out. Number nine, shooting display. We have already talked about grid line, but here you have several options to choose from. And I would also recommend turning on the emphasized record display so that when you see the red border, you know you are recording. Number 12 shooting option the product showcase mode allows you to do this it will focus on the thing you are holding 
and focus back to your face when you move the thing away. Cinematic vlog will give you several looks to choose from, and you will also see the black bars at the top and bottom. You can also adjust this directly on the monitor. Auto framing will check you and create the impression that someone is holding the camera for you. Framing operation. Start when checking means you will have someone else touch the screen to start checking the subject. But if you are using auto framing, it is very likely that you are filming by yourself, so auto start would be more suitable. The 15 second and 30 second switch mean it will change from a cropped framing to a wider framing for a 15 or 30 second interval. You can also choose what size you want to crop in. If you are a solo content creator who need to film yourself very often, I would suggest putting the auto framing feature on your custom key. I will cover how to do that later in the video. Number one, exposure. Here you can see ISO, but a faster way to change the ISO is from your dial wheel. You can see here some of the numbers are underlined. The first one that isn't underlined is the first base ISO. So in this case, uh, we're in SLOG3. The first base ISO is 640. So try to avoid using any number that is below 640. Number three, metering. This is how the camera evaluates the amount of light in the environment and calculates what is the correct exposure. I think in most cases, multimetering works fine. White balance, we have already covered it, but here in shockless white balance, you can set how fast you want the white balance to change during video shooting. I think two is more natural. Number five, color and tone. Here you have creative look. To use this feature, we will have to turn off picture profile. Now you can see a long list of styles. I think it is quite fun to play with. It works very similar to the cine vlog we have just covered, but with creative look, you don't have the black bars at the top and bottom. You can save some time if you don't want to color grade your footage. Next, we have focus. I suggest setting the transition and subject shift sensitivity both to 4 because if it is too fast, it will look very unnatural and the focus will keep jumping around. AF assist. When you shoot with autofocus, you can change what is in focus by operating the focus ring of the lens. So it kind of combines both autofocus and manual focus. Number four, focus assistant. Initial focus magnifier, I will set it to four. This way, when you are using manual focus, you can zoom in to the details of the object by double tapping the screen. We will also set the time to no limit. Otherwise, it will just magnify for two seconds or five seconds. When it is already magnified, you can go back to the original composition by double tapping the screen again or by half pressing the shutter. Number five, picking display. We have already put it on our FN menu but here are some adjustments you can make. I like my picking color to be blue because I think it is easier to see. Picking level set to medium because too high or too low can be misleading and making you think that you are in focus or you are not. Now in the playback and network menu, I think there is nothing we need to adjust, but I want to draw your attention when you press this button, you can inspect the photos or videos. And then while you are inspecting it, if you press Fn, you will be able to send the media to your phone. 
provided that you have already downloaded Sony Creators app. On the setup page, number three, operation customize. This is where you set your own customized buttons. We have already covered how to change your FN menu. So in the same way, you can change your photography custom key and video custom key. The next one is very crucial. You can have different settings for still and movie modes. By default, all of the items are unchecked, so your photo and video menus will be linked together. You will definitely want to separate them if you are taking photos and videos with different picture profiles. So make sure to select the items that you want to separate. I will select everything except for white balance. And that's it. With these basic settings adjusted, you are ready to start filming with your Sony ZV-E1. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comment below. I will see you next time.